for the Baylor Bears and the road purple for the Horned Frogs. And Keontae George, the fabulous freshman number one in goal, controls the opening tip for Baylor. When you watch Baylor this year, it's four out. A lot of ball screens, a lot of dribble weaves side to side. And these guards, very creative. Here's George from the wing. Got it! Good start for the freshman, Keontae George. Good look that time. Good cross-court pass against the help defense, Keontae George. Has been sensational all year as a freshman. Just a few hours ago, named to the midseason Wooden Award Top 25, as was Mike Miles Jr. Yep, two Dallas kids. One's a junior, Miles, and George, obviously, the precocious freshman. Those two know each other well from the Metroplex and also from playing together at the Damian Lillard Summer Camp this past summer. More on that later. Here's Adam Flagler, 10 and gold. Out to George, nice shot fake. Top of the key, and he's two for two. Rich, we saw him Saturday. He got a little bit rattled up in Ames. But we also have seen the maturity all season long. And a great start. This is a critical game for both teams. On the floor first, it's LJ Cryer. LJ's missed the last two games due to concussion protocol, but he's in the starting lineup tonight, and he makes up that three-headed monster that you talked about earlier. Now let's go back and watch Keontae George. Watch this smooth shooting stroke. Good hook by Flagler. Money. And that great pass here by Eddie Lampkin, the big fella. There's another one by Keontae George. That gets him started very nicely. George sixth in the conference and three-point percentage eighth in scoring altogether. Baylor comes in 0-1 in conference play. They took it on the chin in Ames last Saturday. TCU came from 13 down to win in Fort Worth against Texas Tech. And Miles has his first dime of the night to number four in purple, Eddie Lamb. Well, that's breakdown defense right there because Flo Thamba came out and double-teamed the ball, and nobody took Lampkin on the roll to the basket. That is a breakdown. Both of these teams will spread the floor tonight, and you'll see a lot of ball screens in pick and roll. Ten on the shot clock. George, the bounce pass turned it over. One of the best fast break teams in the nation. The Horned Frogs get slowed down there. Well, they definitely, definitely want to get up and down this court, no question. Here's Damian Ball, ten in purple, the Memphis transfer. Nice pass to Emmanuel Miller, and Miller's got his first two. Now the junior from Scarborough, Ontario, has played really well over the last couple weeks. This this DCU team is connected, they're experienced, they play hard, and they get after you. Look at this. Look at Mike Miles all alone. Count that as a fast break bucket. Mike Miles, one of the best defensive guards in this league. Miles' 15th steal of the season already. There's another three ball, and Keontae George has not missed yet. He's so smooth. That's just about a picture-perfect jump shot. Not a lot of wasted motion. The preseason Big 12 freshman of the year has been living up to all the accolades so far. First foul of the game, going to be called on number 11 in goal, Jalen Bridges. On a league full of transfers, Jalen Bridges comes over from West Virginia where he was a two-year starter. Literally grew up 20 minutes from Morgantown. And now a couple thousand miles away in Waco. Mike Miles at the line. Excellent. Score second in the conference at 18.6 a game, and he already has six so far tonight. And now Eddie Lampkin will check off as, <laughs> believe it or not, we have a uniform issue with TCU. Looked like I don't think I don't think. Uh, Xavier Cork has his jersey. Yeah, Xavier Cork tried to check in without a jersey on. So now Jacoby Coles is going to have to take his spot. 
Someone get that man a jersey. I think somebody better be running to the locker room right now. Miles two for two. So how about this? Baylor's three for three from the field. TCU four for four. Mike Miles already with seven. Keontae George with nine. And these are two good defensive teams. Bamba. They'd love to get him involved early. And a traveling violation called on Flo Thamba. Flo's got to catch that ball in traffic and kick it out. Much like Lampkin did earlier. Got the ball too deep. Little token pressure here now by Baylor. Here's Miles guarded by Cryer. The drive by Micah Peavy, who's seeing his first run of the game. Out of bounds, it'll stay TCU basketball. TCU comes in 12 and 1 on the season, one of only a dozen teams that have just one loss on the season. We welcome those of you who just watched Iowa State take down Oklahoma in Norman. So the Cyclones start off Big 12 play 2-0. Uh -huh. We're here in Waco. It's the Baylor Bears ranked 19th in the country, taking on the 17th ranked TCU Horned Frogs. Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fraschilla, a top 25 tilt in the Big 12. Now we saw this Baylor team lose in Ames on Saturday without LJ Cryer. He's back tonight. And so far, Rich, both teams really efficient offensively. Keontae George. On the road in league play to BC and Wake. It's a big early foul, and it goes as a turnover. You mentioned the offense. 17th ranked TCU Horned Frogs, Rich Hollenberg, Fran Fraschilla. A top 25 tilt in the Big 12. And we saw this Baylor team lose in Ames on Saturday without LJ Cryer. He's back tonight. And so far, Rich, both teams really efficient offensively. Keontae George, three for three from three-point range so far. And LJ Cryer's got his first bucket of the night. Oh, they Welcome back. Yep, they missed him Saturday. This is one of the best, if not the best backcourt in the country. It's certainly at the top of the list. Three outstanding players. And they are four for four from three-point range. Mike Miles with seven in the early going. Trying for more. Too short. And Thamba tracks it down. Cryer again. Heat check off the mark. Miles with a head of steam. The blow by and the bucket for Mike Miles Jr. Big 12 preseason player of the year, and he's showing you why. Tell you what we're seeing right now, Peavy guarding Flagler. Micah Peavy, one of the best defensive players in this league at six foot seven. So he's got his work cut out for him. Eight on the shot clock. Now they switch, and Coles is on Flagler. Cryer with three to shoot. Flagler, and he got bailed out by a foul on Jacoby Coles. That's his first. And we have our first timeout of the half. When you talk about Baylor, you're talking about those guards. Between Baylor and TCU. And it's the first time out of those 189 times that both teams are ranked in the top 25. That's amazing. Both teams starting out hot from the field. Nine for 12 combined. As Adam Flagler at the line for the first time tonight misses his first. Hey, little nugget to get in real quickly. LJ Cryer on one team. Eddie Lampkin on the other, former high school teammates at Morton Ranch down in Katy, Texas. And they had great success down there. Coached by Chris Turner. They won 78 games in the three years they were together. And now they're back on the court a couple times now in the past couple years competing against each other. That's always fun. Yeah. Great to mention the Morton Ranch Mavs yep. in a college basketball game. Here's Jacoby Coles left alone from the wing. Around and out, bridges the rebound. And Baylor wants to run. Why not? Against this defense, I think you gotta get out and try to get some shots in the transition game. Three subs on the floor for Scott Drew. 
Cryer off the mark. Coles the rebound. Look how quickly they get out, Rich. That one comes up short, out of bounds. Well, Jamie Dixon leads his TCU Horn Frogs into Waco in the midst of a 10-game winning streak, friend. That's the fourth longest active win streak in college basketball after undefeated Purdue and New Mexico lost this past week. Jamie Dixon back at his alma mater. 13 great seasons at Pittsburgh. Seventh year, I believe, back here in uh, Fort Worth. And he has done an outstanding job. This this is probably his most complete team, Rich. Remember, he's coached guys like Kenrich Williams and Desmond Bain now in the NBA, but this team is deep. What a season Desmond Bain's having for the oh. Memphis Grizzlies, huh? No question. That foul's going to go on to number 13 in purple, Shahade Wells. On the other sideline, it's Scott Drew. Back to back to back. Big 12 Coach of the Year awards for the man I call the Ted Lasso of college basketball. He leads with optimism and energy, and that culture has be made that team maybe not a blue blood in college hoops, but we call him a green blood at this point. Uh, I'll tell you, they've had their, and by the way, today they picked up another great young player, uh, another high school recruit for, for Scott Drew, five-star Yves Missy, 6'11 kid from Cameroon. Two great recruiting classes in 23-24. By the way, you talk about that culture. That culture's been pass passed on to Manhattan, Kansas. Mm -hmm. Where Jerome Tang has got an outstanding team. And what a win last night yeah. down in Austin. 116 points scored on the road against the Longhorns. There's TCU. They lead the nation in fast break points. So far, haven't gotten it going here in the Farrell Center. An early two-point lead for Baylor, who lost their Big 12 opener on the road in Ames. TCU won their home opener against Texas Tech, despite trailing Texas Tech by 13 at one point in that game in Fort Worth. Watch this team now. They'll go. They'll do. A, they'll run a lot of four-out offense. Eddie Lampkin. Big fella, very mobile, loses at that time. Good pressure there by the freshman. Josh, say it, Rich, say it. Oh, John Wuna. Oh, John Wuna. Josh, oh, John Wuna. Young man from the NBA Global Academy. We watched him Saturday. I told you this. Watching Baylor's big guys over the years, I think he's as advanced as any of the great big men that have played in this program. Yeah, they're really high on him. Yep. Had a double-double a couple games ago. Oh, John Wuna, I gotta keep saying it. <laughs> Here's Langston Love for three. He gets in the act. Well, we mentioned this a couple times early in the year. This is about the fifth game he's playing without that brace on his right knee. ACL surgery last November, just starting to get back into form. A 6-0 Baylor run has them up five. Five three-pointers already for the Bears in this first half. This is a Baylor team that only managed five threes in the entire game in that loss to Iowa State. Uh, a little different tonight. Dale Langston Love knocking it down. This gives them more depth in the backcourt. Well, Baylor content to take and make a lot of threes. That's part of the DNA of this team. Quite the opposite with these Horn Frogs. Miller. Five on the shot clock. Ball's in trouble. Wild shot, but he gets the foul called. That's going to go on Dale Bonner. And not a smart play by Dale Bonner because Ball, with the clock running down, had to put something on the rim, and you got to get away from him in that, in that situation. Bonner, the young man from Cleveland, Ohio, did not have a Division I scholarship start his career at Fairmont State before transferring to... They are last year. Well, here's our men's basketball Thursday night matchup. Jaime Jaquez leading number 10 UCLA against rival USC and Boogie Ellis. Coverage from Pauley Pavilion begins at 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on ESPN and the app. And we got six Wooden Award midseason 
candidates in this game tonight. Jaime Jaquez of UCLA also on that wooden list. He's having a great year from Mick Cronin. I think it's so good that he's going to be a National Player of the Year candidate. Love the tip in by Ojan Wuna. Terrific young athlete, this young man. Runs the floor, block shots, and that's all he needs to do is just clean up some garbage on the offensive end. From that NBA Global Academy where they got Jonathan Chamochachu. Yep, and that is exploding. Out of bounds, a rare TCU turnover, their second of the night. And right now, Baylor in the midst of their largest lead of the night. 20 to 15, 11.38 to go. Timeout on the tournament in March. That's the best way to put it. Yep. As you said, bracketology, never too early to talk about that. Joe Lenardi has nine of the ten teams in. And the one team that's out is the first four out. That would be Texas Tech. Tough break last night for Texas Tech. Watch yeah. out, Mob here. Bad pass. Here's Miles in Look transition. Out fast. Look out fast. O'Bannon goes down hard. The foul is going to go on Langston Love. Langston did a good job of holding his ground. You see how quick TCU is, but that time Charles O'Bannon out of control. And that's a good call. Two feet set facing the man with the ball. And as fast as this team is, right there, Chuck O'Bannon's got to be a little more judicious in transition. Watch Flagler switch out by Lampkin. Good job. Got the mismatch. Can they get it inside? Flagler navigating off the window. No. Langston loved the offensive rebound and the putback. He's a big factor for this team, Rich, because he's a strong power guard. I think sometimes this year they'll play four guards. But it's great to see him back without the brace 12 months after the knee surgery. 13 months. Miles catch and shoot in and out. Caleb Lohner with the rebound. One for their last seven are the Horn Frogs. And how about Baylor's offense? Seven for 12 to start out against a really good TCU defense. That one's out of bounds. And good. a Baylor turnover. Yep, good pressure by Emmanuel Miller. Emmanuel, the transfer from Texas A&M. Two years now, terrific. Watch, watch the active hands now. It's one thing you're going to see from this Horn Frog team. Good activity. They played a game up in Salt Lake City a couple weeks ago, Rich, right before Christmas. That was as good a defensive performance as I've seen in the Big 12 all season. I heard you raving about that throughout the week. What stood out to you so much about it? Great five-man connectivity, helping each other. And just, you know, they're, they're this team, because of the experience of being together for a couple of years, it's a very close-knit team. And Mike Miles' defense sets the tone for the rest of his teammates. And a lot of times, offensively, what you just saw is what TCU does as well as anybody. Get their misses and put them back. No question. By the way, Baylor's done that great yeah. for the last two decades. Tough shot. Deontay shot. George with 18 pro scouts from 15 teams in the NBA on hand to watch. And he knocks down his fourth triple of the night. I say tough shot because that's the kind of shot they want to see him make. Here's Lampkin working on Thamba. Really traveled, I thought. Oh, and the dancing bear. They yep. used to call him Baby Shaq. Really? Kip Kissinger said he bobbled the ball, which means that he... It was not a travel, according to the official. A six-point Baylor lead coming up on nine minutes to go in the first half. And another turnover for Baylor. Rich, take a look. Keontae George. He's going to be drafted in the first round. Watch this step back. Money. But Eddie Lampkin, the big fella, you call him Baby Shaq? Going to work inside against Full Thumba. Nicely done. As is usually the case at a Big 12 contest. Yeah. A bevy of NBA scouts on hand. Kind of can pick them out, can you? Yeah. They're middle-aged guys. <laughs> <laughs> Dressed like they're in the 70s and 80s. <laughs> There's another putback. Charles O'Bannon. He's got four, now the lead down to four for Baylor. Such a solid TCU team. They go nine deep. O'Bannon after three years at USC, a lot of injuries. 
really found a home in Fort Worth. Yep, he's the son of Charles O'Bannon, UCLA Bruin, national champion, 1995. Now George on the drive. Good footwork from the precocious one. And you know what we haven't seen yet? We haven't seen his great passing either. And there's a steal and a turnover. 50-50 ball comes up for Frost and a foul called. And that's going to go on Flo Thamba, his first. And they may want, they may review this to see if Flo Thamba fouled intentionally. One loss, and you know about that UConn Providence rivalry. 50 miles between stores and Providence. I'm a former Providence Friar. You know where my heart is tonight, Eddie Cooley and his Providence Friars. All right, Rich, so that last foul, we confirmed it was a flagrant one. Emmanuel Miller will shoot two. The ball will be out of bounds underneath. And the key is that, to remember, Flo Thamba did not play the ball. Watch him reach for the shoulder right there. That's an easy call. Yeah. And uh, he's got to know better as a 50-year senior. I'd say that. Miles will trigger the inbounds for the Horn Frogs. Down by four. Coming up on eight minutes to go in the first half. And a foul called on the floor. That's going to be Thamba second. And that's why that flagrant one was so important because Flo's going to sit now. Now, here's the good news. As we watch Baylor over the last few games, oh, John Wuna has actually started to play more. And, and the long-term prognosis for this kid is the NBA. So he's going to get more opportunity to show NBA scouts what he can do tonight. Miller misses the putback. Here's Flagler. Just one point so far for Adam Flagler. Get out. Change that. Yep. Great PhD right there. Proper hand development. Good spin off the glass. Terrific. Go back and think of Butler and Teague. An answer. Yep. From Mike Miles. He's got a dozen. He looked over at that Baylor bench with a big smile on his face. Nothing malicious. A lot of these guys know each other. Now these guys come from the Metroplex, probably the best high school basketball in the country right now. Miles had 26 last year against the Bears. 10 on the shot clock. Good matchup. Look at this matchup. Nice pass. With four to shoot. Deontay George does, gets fouled for his efforts, and Deontay George will go to the line for the first time. Jamie Dixon did not like that call. <laughs> Watch this, watch, watch this smooth, smooth hand action right there. PhD, proper hand development, and watch Mike Miles Jr. Good defense, sizes up, knocks it down. What'd you say Mike Miles did this summer along with Keontae George? He was at the Damian Lillard Skills Camp, first ever. <laughs> And you talk about a who's who. They only chose 20 college players, 20 high school players. And among those 20, it was Keontae George. It was Mike Miles. And in keeping with our Big 12 conversation, Jalen Wilson was yeah, there as well. Absolutely. And my buddy, Phil Beckner, who coached Damian Lillard at Weber State and has become his private trainer, just has done an amazing job, not only with Damian, but all those young guys that hang out with Damian in the summer. One of the great NBA players of our time. Deontay George leading all scores with 16 already in the first half. Oh, good energy right there by the big fellow. Now he's got to rotate back quickly. PV, too strong. And look at the effort from the freshman George. He leads this team in floor burns, too. Yeah, you know, the thing that has impressed the Baylor staff since the day he got here is the humbleness which with his work with his work ethic the defense the we haven't even seen a great passing but watch this this kid's gonna be a millionaire in a year and laying it all out there he has not put one foot in the circle and one out the door he's been all in and uh he's become a better player since october that's for sure the top rated recruit ever to come to baylor paul b and cardi had him rated as number three overall last year Flagler, too strong. Ojan Luna, the rebound. And Bridges has the bucket. Well, that's that energy we talked about from Ojan Luna. 
He's not going to give you a lot of offense in the low post, but it's energy. Great effort right here on the glass. Bridges finishing at the rim. And a guy that he reminds me of that's in the NBA right now, Quinn Capella oh, yeah. of the Atlanta Hawks. Josh rebounds, blocks shots, runs the floor. And good effort right there. A little zone by Baylor coming out. 1-1-3. One, one, and now they go to man. They show zone. They go back man. That looks like they're matching up a little bit. With 10 on the shot clock, Miles, a little step back in two-point land. And it's tracked down by Lampkin. Another offensive rebound by the Horn Frogs. They're 20th in the nation in that category. Nice cut. And a nice dime. Mike Miles will go to the line off that pass from Damian Ball. Mike Miles has no problem getting to the foul line with that frame. Built like a defensive back kind of fitting when you think of... TCU's next few days as they head out to California on Friday, the football team and support staff. What a great season by Sonny Dykes and Max Duggan and that whole Horn Frog, Horn Frog crew. Now, don't give it away just yet because everybody is waiting for Fran Fraschilla. Oh, I'm sure pick. they are. Who's going to win the national championship game Monday night? You know, even my man Brent Musburger is one. <laughs> you know what I mean? Even your friends in the desert are waiting? Even my friends in the desert. What are we weighing? Thir they're weighing 13 and a half on the Frogs? Last I saw, I think it was a 12 and a half I'm for Georgia. That's, that's, that's a big number. That's a big number, man. Here's Bridges for three. Oh! oh! Do my eyes deceive me, Fran? Well, what did we see all day? The block shot. We were here twice today. And Jalen Bridges, who's been in a massive shooting slump, no other way to say it, Look at that. He, Rich, right? We were here at 2 o'clock. We got here early tonight. And all he did was shoot it. And he let it fly. This kid shot about 35% at West Virginia. It's like being in a, a batting slump. Yeah. Got to have a short memory if you're a shooter. Jalen Bridges does. And the hard work pays off with his first triple. Drew, take a look. 47% of their shots this season behind the arc. Bridges from deep. Flagler, that's money. Count that. Of course, Keontae George has been red hot. LJ Cryer's got a one as well. And I think Jamie Dixon took that second time out because he said, guys, we have got to crowd that three-point line. We might as well go home now. Miller, left hand. Did he get it to go? Yes, he did. An and one opportunity for Emmanuel Miller. Strong drive that time. Defender not there early enough. And watch Miller finish through the contact. Yeah, defender sliding. Easy call. Yeah, with all the good news that Jalen Bridges has provided, he's now fouled himself out of this first half with three fouls. So Emmanuel Miller steps to the line. He is six tonight, averaging 19 a game over his last three. Did you hear what I just heard? In the yeah, the, the, the croaking of the frogs. frogs. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a little gamesmanship going on in here. You would I mean, expect to hear that at Schollmeyer Arena, yeah. not here at the Fell Center. Perennial rival. He said it goes back, what, over 100 years? Yeah, 1908, the first time these two teams met on a basketball court. Seven points for Miller. But the lead is 10 for the 19th ranked Bears. With Cryer back, and we watched them Saturday in Ames, how much smoother does this team look? You talked about TCU being connected defensively. This Baylor team looks connected offensively. Yeah, I, I would agree. Seven to shoot. Cryer with three on the shot clock. Tough two by LJ Cryer. He has. Seven. Loner did not take a bad shot. He kicked it to Cryer. And when you score 3,500 points in high school almost, you know how to get your shot off. Good job by LJ. Clock running down. Joshua John Wooner called for his second foul. I think what might we might see right now is either he plays through to two. Interested to see if I'd like to see them play four guards. 
I think at some point in the Big 12, you'll see four guards and Loner, Ojan Luna, Thamba. Problem with that is I'm not sure they practiced talking to Scott Drew today. They haven't practiced that lineup very much. So Damian Baugh at the line, shooting one and one. And he makes the first. We have a men's basketball Saturday matinee for you with Oscar Shibwe, the reigning national player of the year in Kentucky, taking on Brandon Miller and number nine Alabama in Tuscaloosa. The coverage of this Sonic Blockbuster starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Brandon, yeah, Brandon Miller is a lottery pick, but yeah. Noah Clowney. It's interesting. I got a chance to see him a couple weeks ago against Memphis, and we talked about that, Tommy Hart and I, on the broadcast. He'd be a number one pick, first round pick. Mock drafts have gotten smart. If you like rebounding, you want to oh. tune into that game. Oh. Alabama, as a team, leads the nation in rebounds. And obviously, Oscar Shibwe just eats glass. Exactly. That's Miller's first. Rich, you mentioned the NBA Global Academy. Good for them. They've got, a, they've got an academy in Latin America. They've got one in Australia. And uh, you mentioned... Uh, John Chamochacho, who's on that Baylor bench, we're probably not going to see him this season after that knee injury. But this young man, Santi Vescovi in Tennessee, another guy, Josh Giddy in the NBA, who had a great game last night against the Celtics. That academy has really, really started to produce some fine players. And yeah. this young man, no different at the line. He is going to be one of Baylor's best big guys. We're talking Motley, Corey Jefferson, Quincy AC, Perry Jones. And a nice touch from the free throw line yeah. for the big man. Oh, boy. And there's a turnover caused by the Baylor pressure. And it was really token pressure. Shahade Wells threw that ball too high. A TCU team that prides itself on valuing the basketball. Low turnovers, sixth in the nation in turnover margin. They have their fifth turnover of the night tonight. Under four to go. The lead is a dozen for the 19th ranked Bears. Ojan Luna off the pretty feet from Langston Love. Nice job of Langston Love leading Ojan Luna right to the rim. Here's Bob. Short on the three. Love tracks it down. Langston Love having a productive first half. And an, an impressive overall offensive performance by this Bear team. I think Langston Love is the X factor. We have not seen him on his at his best yet, Rich, because of that uh, recovery from knee surgery. A little too much dribbling right now. He's giving the ball a headache. Ten on the shot clock, but he gives it up. It's Ojong Wuna again. Back out. Cryer for three. And an offensive rebound by Loner. Now three minutes to go in the half. Oh, no, Langston Love. Dale Bonner could have went left. He faked that way, found Love in the, on the right side. Baylor six of their last seven from the field. Miles around and out. Offensive rebound and a putback by Miller. I don't think Scott Drew could have drawn this up any better. Coming off what we thought was a pretty dismal performance on Saturday in Ames. And how about Ames? They won again tonight, the Cyclones, in Norman. So Kansas off to a 2-0 start. Two close games. Iowa State, 2-0 as well. And we've got a foul on the floor and a timeout on the floor. The guards have come to play tonight, friend. More guards here than Buckingham Palace. Keontae George gets it started. The performance on Saturday, they were shorthanded. But really, really impressive and... The beat goes on for this Baylor team because they've got two more great recruiting classes coming in. Again, they show zone right here. Let's see if they say to stay in it after a pass. Nice cut inside. O'Bannon can't pay it off. And O'John Wuna snares it. Good high-low action right there. Just couldn't finish it. Already nine threes on the night for Baylor. And I thought that one was a heat check by the freshman. Little quick. Good pass. Excellent. Lampkin running the floor. That guy's about 270, and he beat everybody up the floor that time. Very light on his feet. 
as you can imagine from looking at him, Fran, he played football all the way up through his sophomore year in high school. That's when he took up basketball. And I think that he, he said to us it's his, it was his favorite sport yeah. growing up. Offensive foul. We're going the other way. Is that a foul on Ojon Wunum? If it is, it's his third. Yep. Watch Eddie Lampkin right now. Run the floor. Good pass. Great catch. That's very underrated right there. A guy that size to catch that ball in the move like that. Really burst on the national scene last year in that second round game in the NCAA tournament. Had a double-double against number one Arizona. And right now, Scott Drew's trying to get Ojan Wuna out of the game with the two fouls. And Thamba's trying to come back in. Yeah. And Scott hasn't used his make it or uh, leave it, take it or leave it timeout. Here's Ojan Wuna with those three fouls. And he draws the foul on O'Bannon. And now he's got to stay in the game. <laughs> well, something to keep an eye on in the second half. Two yeah. of the bigs for the Baylor Bears. Jalen Bridges has three. Ojan Wuna has three as he steps to the line to shoot. Very mature for his age. I mentioned all those big guys. I got to mention my man, Epe Udo. My bad, Epe. NBA first round pick, played as a great player in Europe. Yeah. Epe played with Tweety Carter, Lasterius Dunn. Tweety's on the staff now yep. for Scott yep. Drew. The Epe. first McDonald's All American to come here. Yeah. Epe started his career with Tommy Amaker at Michigan. When Tommy left for Harvard, Epe decided to come to Waco. It worked out pretty well. They've done a great job through the years, Rich. You know this. We, we got to say it a couple times a season. They not only develop guards. This season, it's a guard team, right? But through the years, they have they are just a great development program. They're right there with Jay Wright's Villanova program, Gonzaga, Tony Bennett. Their player development is second to none. See, and I try to go into Eddie and try to pick up that another foul on Flo. Get it to him. Dangerous pass, but it's paid off. Miles to Miller for two. Oh, smart play right here. Smart play because the clock runs, but the shot clock doesn't run. And look at Adam Flagler. He's looking up at the scoreboard to say the, the shot clock is not to, supposed to start until I touch it. He let the... He said... As much as I'm so happy for Jerome Tang, he's like a brother, it's going to be weird because it's a conference game. By the way, I just got to go back and tell you, that was a great play by Adam Flagg. Yeah. Not bad when your conference has six of the 25 players in the Wooden Award midseason top 25. And I'll tell you, Marquise Noel oh. is right there. As, yeah. I think he's going to be an all, all Big 12 player. There's no question. About a seven-second differential between the shot clock and the game clock. That's due in large part to number 10 with the ball, Adam Flagler. Nice go screen. The jumper, no. George, the rebound, had it blocked. Six seconds to go in the half. Here's Ball. Time running out, got the puck. Yep. Good job by Damian. Adam Flagler could not get out of the way. We were just talking about his IQ right there on one end. Damian Ball took that ball right at Adam Flagler in transition. He's coming at you, right? Watch this now. And not much there, but enough. Yeah. I think Damian Ball is so underrated for this team. He's one of those guys, Rich, because of Mike Miles and all the attention he gets, rightfully so. He might be in the G League for a while. You could see a guy like this on an NBA roster. Quick, fast, good defender. Runs a team. Remember, he started his career at Memphis. Mm -hmm. All his points tonight coming from the free throw line. He's got six. And it's a 10-point Baylor lead with 1.6 to go. If Xavier Cork in the game. He's going to go on the ball. Loner's got to make sure somebody touches this. He doesn't want to throw it out of bounds. Here's Flagler. The heave from beyond half court. And it comes off to the right. Well, I mean this in the highest way of a compliment as I can. Baylor front runners, when they lead at the half over the last seven years. Point line is one of the best in the country. They're giving up 29% behind the arc. We've highlighted how good a defensive team they are.
but not in this first half because the Bears, as we pointed out, Rich, on fire from deep. Nine for 13 in the first half for the Bears. They shot 62% overall. TCU, 22 of their 39 points coming inside the painted area, and they went 12 of 13 from the free throw line. Well, that's a great play out of the timeout because Lampkin had been switching on that down screen. Both Amba just missed it. Mike Miles going right into the teeth of the defense to start. Draws the foul on Adam Flagler, his first. Well, he's built like a fire hydrant, Mike Miles, and I like the idea that he just throws his body into the defender on the drive. Mike Miles had 12 in the first half, part of the Wooden Award preseason top 50 just earlier tonight, named to the midseason top 25, the preseason Big 12 player of the year. Playing like it despite that miss from the free throw line. Just recently reached his thousand point early in his junior year. And he's got a Baker's dozen tonight coming off 23 in that win against Texas Tech in the Big 12 opener. Here's George. He led all scorers with 16 in the first half. Nice pass. Nice pass from Flagler to Thamba and one. TCU very aggressive in the pick and roll with their big guys, and Thamba got out of there early. He got away from his man to the rim. No one picked him up. Watch how quickly he leaves. And just too late. Manuel Miller does not get there in time. Look how much space Big Flo has. And this is a guy that uh, Scott Drew told us last weekend. Came into his fifth year a little bit out of shape, but starting to pick it up. And he is, Rich, the all-time winningest player in Baylor history. Making his 78th consecutive start tonight. He completes the three-point play, and the lead is a dozen for the Baylor Bears. Pretty good when you're the all-time winningest player at a school that has won a national championship with you as a starter. Miles. Floats it up to Lampkin. He can't finish. Here's Keontae George in the open court. Spot up three. Short by Flagler. Well, looks like Daniel got away with a travel. Soft touch. Rolls off the rim and into the arms of Adam Flagler. Baylor coming in 19th in the nation. 10-3. and three, Coming off that loss on the road in Ames to Iowa State looking to even their Big 12 ledger at a win apiece. Every win in this league this season is cause for celebration. Nice bounce pass. Bolo Thamba will go to the line and shoot two. That's Mike Miles' first foul of the night. Well, you look at Jonathan Ojomuna, Flo Thamba, Caleb Lohner, certainly a guy that they are missing this season, Rich. He's a guy that uh, I think probably comes with the most respect or, of anybody in this conference among players and coaches. You see John, Jonathan, Chamwa Chachua. It was last February when he had that severe knee surgery. We've been watching in practice, and he's moving really well. It's remarkable. It is remarkable because it's about an 18-month rehab. Look at that speed oh, right there. Low and by one. and one. The yep. bump in the bucket for Mike Miles. What I love that Miles is doing right now is he's not settling for jump shots. He's putting that. He's putting it in, putting it in a high gear and getting to the rim. Watch him get by Thamba. Thamba bumps him from behind. They're great in transition, and that came off of a free throw. And major foul issues for the big men from the Baylor Bears. And again, to finish up, they're playing without Jonathan Chamuachacho every day, John, because he brings it every day. And certainly a big uh, piece of the puzzle that's missing this season. Bamba, Bridges, and Ojan Luna, all with three fouls apiece. Flagler puts it up and in. Circus shot and that's from that, Adam Flagler. And that's that pass back out by Thamba that we talked about in the first half. Good job by Flo. Didn't run anybody over. Kicked it back out. 
I throw it into the big guy and try to get another foul. They do just that. Here's Lampkin facing up Thamba. Now Miles from deep. Got it. Mike Miles showing the range. He has 19 to lead all scorers. And a terrific pass by Eddie Lampkin kicking it out. Caught it and looked opposite. Good opportunity for TCU. It's quiet in here right now. George turns the corner. Gets the foul and will go to the line. Uh, this ball's kicked out. Watch Adam Flagler on the drive right now. Good, good pass by Thamba. And again, great body control. On the other end, a kick out by the big fella. One hand pass. Smooth release by Mike Miles. Grew up about 30, 40 minutes from Fort Worth. Had a chance to go to Oklahoma State with his buddy, Cade Cunningham, who we played AAU basketball with, along with Jacoby Coles on that TCU team. And, and Rondell Walker as and well. And Rondell Walker, yep. The Texas Titans. That's right. So that's the first point of the second half for Keontae George, who had 16 in the first. You're talking to some of my NBA scout friends at halftime. One of the things that we talked about, Rich, is this kid plays with joy. You know, he plays with a smile on his face. We talked about the humility, ability to be coached for a guy who was so high, heavily thought of. Here comes that speed. Lampkin, baseline too strong towards the rebound. And Baylor looking to push. Bridges with those three fouls. Bridges wild shot. Here they come. They lead the nation at fast break points, and there you see why. You see why right there. Wow. Well, Rich, we talked to Jamie Dixon. They spent all summer conditioning to play this style. And you can see right off the bat, start the second half, they are flying. They have five players on the roster who are 22 years old. They return more players than any Power 5 conference team. So while a lot of teams, Fran, over the summer, were working on building chemistry, this team worked on conditioning. And you see it. Wow. Mike Miles, another bucket. This is what he's about. He leads all scorers with 23. His season high is 26, career high 28. But it is worth noting, they trailed Texas Tech by 13 in the Big 12 opener, trailing Baylor by as many as 17, as you mentioned, and now they've cut it to seven, and a chance to cut it even more. Here's Miles. That's Bounce great. pass. Yep. Oh, the oh. pass by Bridges. Track down TCU ball. Here's Wells, air ball on the three. We're in our break zone, 15.43 to go, the 19th rank. Hey, Sonny Dykes, how's he doing? Yeah, he doing good. Yeah, so you going, you're going with the Frogs. Yeah, 100%. All the way. 100%. You better go with the Frogs. So what do I do? I do this? Yeah, like right that. Okay. Frogs. I go with Frogs. Yeah, Frogs. <laughs> Got to go with the frogs, Rich. Says you. Says Brad. me. Oh well, wait a minute. What do you got? It. What do you got invested in this? I, I have. I, I listen. I think Georgia. Pat McAfee said this on College Game Day last week. Georgia basically is a professional team, and I think Georgia repeats as champions. Are you paying tuition at Georgia right now? Well, as a matter of fact, I am. Okay. And my son is a freshman. Okay. But uh, that is not coloring my choice by any stretch. <laughs> I've been in Big 12 country for a long time. Look at this. There's Georgia fans everywhere yeah, now. A you know, national brand. You know, I, I read a great story today in the Athletic about about Stetson Bennett, and after last year's national championship game. Kirby Smart said in the article, he, he said, we were kind of still trying to get rid of him. You know? <laughs> he didn't say it quite that way, so don't don't at me. But what an amazing story Stetson Bennett yeah. has been. And the same thing goes for Max Duggan. I mean, most people, Horn Frog fans, thought their other quarterback was the better That's choice. Right. Chandler Morris, young man from Highland Park High School, he got hurt at Colorado, and they threw Max Duggan back in there, and all those two guys did was go to New York.
the cardiac frogs. Yep. Ten on the shot clock. See if the basketball team could follow suit. Comeback win for them. They trailed by as many as 17 tonight. The lead is nine now for number 19, Baylor. Good pass. Got to catch that, young guy. That's probably got to be a bounce pass by Dale Bonner in traffic. Kind of tried to thread the needle with a little chest pass. But big fella, Josh Ojanwuna back in with three, Rich. See Dale Bonner, what a great story he's been. No scholarships coming out of Cleveland, Ohio. Fairmont State, pretty good D2 program. By the way, you know who recruited him to Fairmont State? Joe Mazzula. Current coach of the Boston Celtics. That's right, former West Virginia Mountaineer. That's right, former coach at Fairmont State. And we will be in Morgantown this year, and I will get some pepperoni. That's roll. right. A couple of weekends from now, I believe it's Texas and West Virginia. LJ Cryer at the line. He had seven in the first half. And he knocks down the first. Big games highlighting our January schedule. The NFL Week 18 season finale featuring a doubleheader. Chiefs Raiders, then Titans Jags. And on Sunday, the FCS championship game between North Dakota State and South Dakota State. A border war. And it's on ABC and Monday night, the national championship game. Presented by AT&T. TCU taking on Georgia. Coverage on every platform, TV, radio, and digital. Now Miles with the ball, leading all scorers with 23. But it's an 11-point Baylor lead. Oh, Look man. at that take. Yep. And he went by a good defender, too. He's quick, he's strong, he's hard to stay in front of. One off his season high is Mike Miles with 25. Got to get that ball side to side right now. Yep, that, that ball off the hands of Dale Bonner out of bounds, an unforced error. That possession stayed almost entirely on the left side of the floor, and that just allowed TCU to lock in on one side. You got to move that defense side to side. That's the 12th Baylor turnover compared to just five by the Horn Frogs. Here's Ball off the window, soft touch. No resistance that time by Cryer or Bonner. And Damian Ball got to the rim and single digits again, Rich. Seven. How do things change for Scott Drew with all of his big men in foul trouble? I think he's just got to, I think they've got to get better ball movement in the half court offense, first of all, and get that, get those opportunities to shoot the three again. Cryer. Here they Lampkin come. with the outlet. Man. Oh, and with the body, Mike Miles again. How good is he? Speed, strength, and this is what they worked on all summer. A veteran team put the work in to play this fast. 21 fast break. Second half, as good as the first half. Got Keontae George, brilliant in the first half, quiet so far. Mike Miles, remember Rich, last summer, you mentioned this summer with Damian Lillard two summers ago. Jamie Dixon's under-19 United States of America gold medal winning under-19 champions. Played with Chet Holmgren, Jaden Ivey. There's Flagler. Out of the timeout. Comes up short. Here and Miles comes. again. So he's a one-man fast break. Oh, that one's blocked by Ojan Wuda. Good pressure by Ball. Bears are rattled right now. Lost in momentum. This place is quiet. You made a great point about them trailing by 13 on Saturday. There's Flagler. Short. Loner steals the ball back. Bonner in the paint. And it rolls off. There's a lid on the basket for the Baylor Bears. Chance to make it a one possession ball game. Oh boy. Skip pass. And O'Bannon can't pay it off. I think they could have got a better shot than that. They had two mismatches. Big little outside. 
Hard foul by Jacoby Coles. That's going to be Coles' second. And Keontae George with 18 points will go to the line and try and get Baylor back on track. And also sort of similar to last weekend's game, we saw Adam Flagler go off for 18 in the first half and then get shut down in the second. Sort of similar with what Keontae George is going through tonight. And I think the one difference is that Flagler only had George and not Cryer to yes. pick up the slack. Remember, Keontae had a great second half, but now the, the, the three-headed monster is back in there. We haven't seen Langston Love yet, who I thought played really well in the first half. George, one for two. And it's a two-possession ball game. Full court pressure by the Bears. Like to do this, the danger is if you get that ball to these guards, they can make plays. Coles almost had a lot to Lampkin if he wanted it. But Lampkin does the hard work himself. He's so quick off his feet for the guy that size. Eddie Lampkin, eight points, six rebounds tonight. This building is quiet, Rich. It was rocking in the first half. DCU defense has really picked up uh, the pressure in the second half, especially behind the arc. Under 10 on the shot clock. Here's the mismatch. George guarded by Lampkin. Rises up. Can't knock it down. Eddie La yeah, and Eddie Lampkin didn't think so, right? Foul. Ooh, look out. That's going to be on Flagler. Well, Adam Flagler finally figured a way how to stop Mike Miles, they did play the ball, so there's no issue there. But again, Mike Miles putting extreme pressure on this Baylor defense in transition. I can't remember in the last five or six, seven minutes where Baylor's been in a half-court defense. Yeah. Here's Miles. Why not try to throw it in and pick up another foul? Seven on the shot clock. Damian Ball will go to the line. Good possession by the Horn Frog side to side. Eddie Lampkin with a good dribble handoff to Ball, who gets himself downhill. That's the first foul on George as Damian Ball will go to the line. Oftentimes, Rich, you'll see that big man on a dribble handoff move his body into the defender, offensive foul, or be sloppy on the handoff. That was well executed. Damian Ball, 6'4", senior out of Nashville, Tennessee, by way of Memphis. They call him Swaggy D in Fort Worth. Just take a look at this. is good execution right here. There's the downhill drive. The opinion of the official, the defender slides in. Ball one for two. So it remains a three-point ball game, 62-59. Under 11 minutes to go. George. Here's Rondell Walker getting some burn for the first time. Walker with the ball, 11 in purple. Now Lampkin to Miller. Miller left hand, no. Bamba the rebound. They got numbers, three on two. Looking for a three-point shot, they got one. But what a closeout by Emmanuel Miller with the block. Ah, the bounce pass, Coles. Rich, this is unbelievable. This fast break, and now they lead the country in fast break points, so it's not a shot. But they're not getting tired. They're getting stronger in transition. And I think they have worn Baylor down. It is now a one-point game. TCU's last lead was 13-12 early in the first half. This is a great closeout by Emmanuel Miller. L.J. Cryer thinks he's got the shot. And look, this is like an instant replay. This is like a layup drill in, in a practice at 3 o'clock. And I'm going to tell you, it's hard to run like this continuously because it takes a lot out of you.
We talked about TCU's depth. Jamie Dixon's done a good job with that tonight, but I'm impressed the way they run. We knew they did. Yeah. It's great to see in person. I don't know what's harder to believe that they have 17 more fast break points than Baylor or that Baylor has zero fast break points total. Yep. Bama missed the first, knocked down the seven. If TCU hits a three, it'll be their first lead since 13 12. Lampkin blocked by Famba. George in transition. And Keontae George will go to the line and shoot two. Smart play by Keontae. Defenders were retreating three on three in the open court to me is an advantage offense. He was looking to pass it, but when no passing lanes were open, he got to the rim, drew some contact. Three on three, think of hockey in overtime, right? Same thing, a lot of advantage to an athletic player like George in the open court. Keontae George has four 20-point efforts already his freshman year and make it five tonight. 20 points on the night for Keontae George. We have a men's basketball doubleheader on Saturday for you, starting with Oscar Shibway in Kentucky in Tuscaloosa to take on Brandon Miller in number nine, Alabama. Coverage of this Sonic Blockbuster starts at 1 Eastern on ESPN and the app. If you haven't seen Brandon Miller, I got a chance to see him against Memphis, Rich. He reminds me of Paul George. He's a six foot eight playmaking forward, can do a lot of things and very coachable. I spent two days with Alabama, really was impressed with him. So George has 21, but his last seven points have all come from the free throw strike. This is dangerous, pressing this team. I don't like it. Nice yep, I don't like it because they're just throwing over the top and they're giving TCU what they've gotten this whole second half, which is easy opportunities at the rim. Impressed with this TCU team. Yeah. One of the more experienced teams in college basketball. 93% of their points and rebounds back from last year. Jalen Bridges for three. Oh, that's going to make him feel good. Two of them tonight. Miles into the teeth of the Baylor defense. Miles did a good job of going right at Flo Thamba. Flo's got a train. Now, it's hard as a fifth-year player, but when you're 6'11", you got to train yourself to throw your hands to the ceiling and back. It's an old Villanova J. Wright trick. You don't come down on the shooter. You throw your hands back behind you to show the official that. Miles at the line on... 27 points and can't make it 28 after Flo Thamba's fourth foul. So Thamba will go to the bench in favor of Josh Ojan Wuna, who also has three fouls. Well, if you can see behind the TCU basket, a lot of cupcakes being held up. TCU's no cupcake this year, Frank. Nope. This is a team that came within a play of going to the Sweet 16. That heartbreaking loss against Arizona last year in the NCAA tournament. As you mentioned, this whole team is essentially back. Flagler off the mark. And it's one and done uh, for the Bears. And the foul's going to go on the freshman. Ojan Wuna, his fourth. He knows it. Freshman mistake. He needed to just get away from that loose ball. Instead, he tried to reach in. Hard not to call this a foul. Take a look. Watch Ojan Wuna. First effort is good. Ball is loose, and then he just reaches in, makes contact. Here's a zone now. They're going to keep the freshman out there on the back line. Walker slices in the lane and gets it to go. Smart play by Rondell because he knew the big guy had the four fouls. On the closeout, what did he do? He drove him. Two-point game again. Under eight minutes to go from Waco. 
Breyer, blocked by Walker. Another fast break opportunity for the Frogs. Here's Miles for three. Off the mark. Can't complain about that shot. Flagler, blocked by Miller. And bodies fly. Two bears down, Love and Flagler as the ball goes out of bounds. Thought it was a good block from our vantage point. What a perform in favor of the Horn Frogs on the road. Mike Miles has led the way. A career high tying, 28 points so far, and there's still seven and a half to go in this game. Baylor, oh, the front line in foul trouble, but don't tell Josh O'John Luna that. He boo right there. Emmanuel Miller fell for the fake handoff. Nine for O'John Luna. Four point Baylor lead. Oh, that's so good. Walker. Off the mark. Good job by Eddie Blampkin to kick it out. Didn't run anybody over. Eddie Blampkin is a good post player. Cryer's been quiet. That one's blocked by Miller, but a foul's going to be called. His third. Emmanuel disagreed with that call. Watch this little peekaboo peek here. Metal Mark Lemon couldn't have done it any better. Puts it under his shirt. He actually didn't. That would be, that would be illegal. So LJ Cryer, who missed the last two games due to concussion protocol, had seven in the first half, two from the free throw line in the second half, and now remains perfect from the strike. Baylor getting almost all of their offensive production in the second half from the free throw line. They're two for 13 from the field. And one for seven from the three-point line, Rich, after being nine, going nine for 13 in the first half. Well, now just a little bit of breathing room for the Bears as the fans in the Ferrell Center come to life. That's smart. Not for long as Damian Ball. Damian Ball recognized that Ojan Wuna switched out. They tried to switch back. It was too late. He was gone. Unimpeded as the entire Baylor front line is in foul trouble. And that's why he drove it. He knows. Oh, and a traveling called on the freshman Langston Love. Now, if you're turn sorry, Fran, that's turnover number 15 for Baylor. Well, Rich, if you're Jamie Dixon, go back, go back to what brung you. Keep going high pick and roll and make the freshman with four fouls guard you. Here he comes. Walker takes it himself. Missed it. The follow by Lampkin. Again, he's playing the freshman on eggshells because of the four fouls. And what Rondell would love to have that back. Two-point game again. It's a lot of energy to get somebody a shot. Contested three, no good from Flagler. A chance to tie or take the lead for the Frogs. Ball took it himself. And the foul goes on Adam Flagler. They keep, they keep pushing the issue. TCU is not getting tired by running. They're getting stronger. Damian Ball gets the ball at three-quarter court, and he is off to the races. Watch them beat Baylor down the court. There's the outlet, and here he comes. Gets into the paint. And that was close. Now that was close. I thought he was legal. But that could easily could have been a charge. But what you love about TCU, they keep pushing the issue. Friend, they have 44 paint points tonight. Yep. Those free throws won't count, but they should because he's at the free throw line because he was aggressive to the cup. No question. If I'm a Big 12 official, I go back to my hotel room every night and I get rest because all of the, I'd say 80% of these games this year are going to be played at this intensity. I thought the first week of the season, Big 12 officials were caught by surprise 
I believe they're the best in the country. It's hard to referee these games. Pryor, after TCU ties it for just the second time tonight, LJ Cryer unties it with his first field goal of the second half. And that gives Baylor a chance to stay in the half court. But Mike Miles is going to take advantage of the mismatches. He's going right up against Thamba. That's what he did. A 30-burger for Mike Miles. He knows Thamba does not want to foul out. First time in his decorated career he's gone for 30 or more. Can I get that 30 burger and get the fries with it? <laughs> it's not what a burger, it's 30 burger. Here's George. Comes up short on the left-handed attempt. TCU's last lead, what? 13 to 12. Oh, what a pass. now? What a pass. Max Duggan would be envious. What a look by Mike Miles. The running and the transition, I've, I haven't seen a team run this this way all season. And Miles going to get called for the foul on that one, his second. But can he do it all, Brad? This is real speed, folks. Take a look. We're not, uh, we're not exaggerating. This team runs. They are willing passers and good passers. Well, they have told us all preseason into the season that the chemistry on this Horn Frog team is uh, outstanding. There, that was a heartbreaking loss to Arizona last March. It came on a very controversial call. And as I recall, Jamie Dixon never said a word uh, negatively about the officiating. They moved on. The summer was great. The fall was great. There's a reason they've won so many in a row. Flagler ties it up with those two free throws. Coming up on four minutes to go. Another barn burner in the Big 12. Put the big guy in pick and roll again. It's working. Here's Ball. He's had a good second half. Harassed by Cryer. With 10 on the shot clock. A wild shot corralled by Thamba. And, good. yeah, good pressure by Walker. Came up to stop that break, Rich. Baylor, a chance to go back on top. They've led for most of this contest. Flagler himself. <laughs> and an offensive foul called on TCU. That play started because Flagler got back in on defense. Damian Ball whistled for the, Took the charge on Damian Ball. He has 21 tonight. Fifth time this season he has 20 or more points. And he leads the team in charges taken. How about that? High school All-American. Dirty work. Three-point Baylor lead with the ball. Good switch out by Emmanuel Miller. Cryer. Kip Kissinger whistles him for the traveling violation. Good defense. They ran a stagger double away for LJ Cryer. Emmanuel Miller switched out. There's the switch. There's the defense. He looks like he slid his foot. Man. Good ball movement. Walker almost turned it over. Here's Miller. Got it past the outstretched arm of Flo Thamba. And Emmanuel Miller has 13. Wasn't a pretty possession, but they kept it alive with hustle. Four frogs in double figures led by Mike Miles Jr. with 30. Two and a half to go. Good D by Miles. Flagler, too strong. Rebound, George. He's trapped in the corner, and a late whistle and a foul called. It looked like it was on Damian Ball. And I think uh, it looked like from here, Keontae got away with a little hook before the contact. He was stuck in the corner. Surprise, Baylor's bench didn't call timeout. But watch, Keontae stuck down there with two defenders, and watch him try to escape. Oh, yeah, yep. 
Tough call. Tough game to officiate. As mature a teenager as you'll find in college basketball, Keontae George. But we saw him lose a little bit of composure late in that Iowa State game. Let's see how he responds tonight in front of the home crowd. You know, his best, but you know, you didn't see it tonight, but his best NBA position will be as a point guard. Mm. He is an absolutely terrific passer in addition to all the other things he does well. And he's got a new career high as well. 24 for Keontae George. Again, pick and roll. Get the big guy out there and exploit him. Two minutes to go in Waco. Three-point game stolen away by George. He's a you coming right back at you. The dump off. Lampkin and add one opportunity. You know what you love about that? Keontae George ripped the ball away from Mike Miles. He finishes at the other end, and what did TCU do? They took it out of the net and came right back at Baylor. You know what I love about this game tonight? High-level intensity, high-level execution. We've been excited to see TCU's fast break. Baylor's guards, nobody's disappointed. And now Josh Ojanwuna will check back in. Ojanwuna has four, but that's one fewer than Flo Thamba, who just fouled out. And if I'm, if I'm Jamie Dixon, I don't have to be a rocket scientist to know the freshman's got four. We're going right back at him next time we get it in the half court. The TCU football team has made it all the way to the national championship game due to their comeback ability. You could say the same thing about the Frogs basketball team. Down 17 tonight, but they trail by just two. Coming up on one and a half to go. Well, this is where those three guards, you got a shell game going on. George hangs, can hit the follow. Oh, John Luna. Great second jump. Great second jump by the freshman. Lampkin almost got away with one. Sure did. Hard game to officiate. Great play. Miles, no. Lampkin, yes. And a timeout called by Jamie Dixon. 15 for Eddie Lampkin, and he's one rebound shy of a double-double. There is in the, in the Big 12, when you talk about Paul and Miles, and Emmanuel Miller doesn't like to be called a power forward. He's a big wing. No timeouts left for Jamie Dixon. Heavey in the game, guarding George. He's a good defender. Here he is. Deontay George with the ball, checked by Peavy. Under a minute to go. And the foul's going to go on Micah Peavy, his fourth. He made sure there was contact right there. He rejected the screen. Take a look right here. Throws that head back. So glad they're taking the flop out of the game over the last few weeks. Bad rule, hard to officiate. There's another look. Yeah, he's riding him on the foul, so it's a foul on PV. Deontay George, 9 for 10 from the stripe so far tonight. Make it 10 for 11 as he adds to his career high with 26 now. Now, oh. make, make or miss, you're pushing it. You know what I'm doing if I'm Baylor? I'm getting back. Yeah. Are you surprised they don't have an extra guy back no, now? No, no, because I, I never like to move everybody off the line because I think it spooks your shooter. Now they should be able to get set. But you know what they're not doing? They're not pressing right. anymore. 27 for George. 30 for Mike Miles. A four-point game with 45 to go. Here's the switch. Here's Miles. For three! My goodness, Mike Miles! They got what they wanted. 
And Ojon Wuna, thinking drive, gave him a little too much space. One point game. Baylor with the lead and the ball, 30 seconds to go. Rich on a miss. If there's a miss, if I'm TCU, I am not calling timeout. I am pushing this ball. I might push it anyway if it's three. Both teams, one timeout remaining. Here's Bridges for three. The ball goes out of bounds, and with 10.1 to go, it'll be TCU basketball down by one. Maybe. Because they will review it. And you so let me try to get three of them back, and he does. Just a 30% three-point shooter coming into tonight, but yeah. he's got three of them tonight so far. I might consider trapping Miles on the ball screen. Let's see what Scott Drew does. Seven seconds left. Tough three. Got it! Oh, my! Chuck O'Bannon from the corner! TCU, winners of 10 straight, looking to make it 11. Down 17 earlier tonight. They lead by one. Timeout, John Wood. And he got the timeout with 2.9 on the clock. All right, now that's the other thing you can do. Throw it to mid call, call timeout. They will go and review it to make sure it's two point. You got to watch where Flagler is. Okay, Flagler is away from the ball. So if you're TCU, there is a high likelihood he's coming to the ball. And let's see if they switch it. Inbounds. George has it. Two he seconds. got it. He's got the open look. It's blocked by Cork. And the Horn Frogs win it on the road. Xavier Cork came out of nowhere.